Today, when you think of Michael Jordan, you think of Nike. And when you think of Nike, you probably think of Michael Jordan, Air Jordan. But in the early days of their partnership, Michael Jordan and Nike nearly split ways. The huge catalog of Jordans that we all know and love today would not exist if it wasn't for one shoe. A shoe that quite literally rescued Nike from losing their biggest asset. I'm talking about the iconic, the legendary, the Air Jordan 3. Welcome back guys and thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, my name is Brian and my brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. So if you're into sneakers, then you might want to consider subscribing to this channel because we drop videos like this all the time and you won't want to miss an upload. Alright guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. In late 1987, Michael Jordan's five-year contract with Nike was coming to an end, and Jordan was pretty set on not renewing. He had grown frustrated with the design direction of the Air Jordan line and wasn't happy with the company. Meanwhile, Rob Strasser, Nike's director of marketing, and Air Jordan 1 designer Peter Moore left the company to create their own venture. Sports Incorporated. Nike feared Strasser and Moore poaching Michael Jordan to Sports Incorporated. If they were going to get MJ to renew the contract with them, it was going to take a miracle. Coming off the success of the Nike Air Max 1, a young Tinker Hatfield would be assigned the task of designing the Air Jordan 3. The shoe was already six months behind schedule, and the pressure to woo Jordan back to Nike was mounting. Up until that point, Michael Jordan felt like his voice didn't really matter when it came to the design of his shoes. Tinker Hatfield's approach was a little different. He was genuinely interested in hearing what Michael's needs were. Unlike his predecessors, Tinker actually sat down with Michael and listened to all his suggestions and requests that he had for the shoe. He found that Michael not only had suggestions, but had very specific demands. The Air Jordan 2 was too heavy and he wanted a lighter shoe. He wanted it to be a mid-top, not too high, not too low. One of the main things Jordan mentioned during their meeting was that he wanted to be able to wear a new pair of shoes for every game. He didn't want the shoes to have to be broken in. He wanted to be able to slip on the shoes and have them be game ready. Many sleepless nights later, Tinker Hatfield emerged with a design for the Air Jordan 3. And it was time to present the shoe to Michael Jordan. Presenting the Jordan 3 to Michael was a big challenge in itself. When Tinker Hatfield and Nike founder Phil Knight flew to California to present the new shoe to Jordan, Jordan was nowhere to be found. In fact, he was out golfing with former Nike executives Rob Strasser and Peter Moore, who were pitching MJ their new company. They told Michael he didn't need to depend on Nike, and he could start his own line where he would have complete control over his brand. Four nerve-wracking hours later, Michael Jordan showed up. He had had a long day and wasn't in the best mood. Once the small talk was over, Phil Knight called on Tinker Hatfield to lead the meeting. Tinker pulled the shroud off the Air Jordan 3 and there they were. He quickly reminded Michael of the demands he made. To make the shoes feel like they're broken in right out of the box, Hatfield used tumbled leather, which made the shoe soft and supple in the right places. Hatfield also made a mid-top just like Jordan requested. The first mid-top basketball shoe ever, actually. It was also the first Jordan shoe to feature a visible air unit in the heel. When Michael Jordan had a closer inspection of the shoe and looked at the elephant print and the iconic Jumpman logo, he was sold. Who wouldn't be? Personally, I think the Air Jordan 3 is a masterpiece. To this day, Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, still credits Tinker Hatfield for saving Nike. To market the shoe, Nike and the marketing firm Wyden & Kennedy hired the then up-and-coming director Spike Lee to direct a series of commercials. Spike Lee's 1986 movie Do the Right Thing featured Mars Blackman, an Air Jordan-obsessed character that Spike plays in the movie. Let's watch one of these iconic black and white commercials now. Mars Blackman here again. You know, nobody in the world can cover my main man, Michael Jordan. Nobody, nobody, nobody. No, no, nobody. I'm telling you, it's impossible. 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 Imp However, it's easy to cover Mars Blackman. The Air Jordan 3 debuted in four original colorways. White cement, black cement, fire red, and the true blues. Michael Jordan also had an amazing season where he won MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. During All-Star Weekend in 1988, MJ and Dominique Wilkins battled it out during one of the most famous slam dunk contests in NBA history. Michael Jordan stole the show with his famous dunk from the free throw line. While wearing a pair of crispy Air Jordan 3s, he took flight, and really, the rest is history. 
We all know that the shoe has been retroed several times and dozens of colorways of the Air Jordan 3 exist, but I'm not going to go through every single little pair here because that would be boring. One interesting thing I'd like to touch on is the fact that the initial sketches that Tinker made for the Air Jordan 3 actually featured a swoosh. Nike recently released versions of the Air Jordan 3 with the swoosh, the Air Jordan 3 Tinker Hatfield, a must cop for any serious Jordan collector. The Air Jordan 3's legacy lives on through the amazing community of sneaker enthusiasts who are passionate about sneakers and appreciate the history behind them. Speaking of sneaker head communities, uh, Nacho and I built a Facebook group of sneaker enthusiasts. The group is called Sneaker Enthusiasts. You could find us on Facebook or you could simply go to the link in the description box to join our group. Nacho and I are moderating the group and if you want more sneaker content in your boring Facebook feed, then you should join us. It's a lot of fun. All right, guys, as always, we really appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.